I'm making this video to talk about soldering irons, various wattages, types, and stuff like that. This is the first soldering iron I've ever used. It's a 25 watt Weller. It's really very rugged and basic, uh, ideal for a beginner. It's excellent for basic lead tin solder work. Rework not so much just because it doesn't reach the temperature that's required for rework. So definitely I'd recommend something like this or comparable for a beginner. This is the second soldering iron I've owned. It's a 12 watt Weller. It's better for precision work if you're doing some really small work. Not necessarily surface mount, but if you have like a micro switch and you need to solder some wires to that, it's really good for low heat precision work. So if you never need to do anything that's pretty intricate and doesn't require too much heat, I'd recommend getting a nice 25, or not 25, 12 watt Weller. This is the third soldering iron I purchased. It's a 30 watt Uh, no name brand soldering iron. It's much better uh, due to the size of the tip and the 30 watts for doing heavier gauge wires and stuff like that. So if you need to solder in some uh, like line voltage stuff, it's good for that. And intricacy, not so much. So, yeah. This is the fourth soldering iron. I've owned. It's a uh, 30 watt. Really, no name on it. Now I think it actually is for like uh, burning wood, uh, for that kind of thing. Uh, the reason I purchased it was due to the fact I could change out the tips, so I could do intricate work versus or more basic work with a larger tip if I needed the larger tip. I really don't recommend getting one like this because the tips wear out so quickly and also it's pretty awkward to hold so yeah I wouldn't recommend buying something like this and here's the fifth soldering iron I purchased it's a 80 watt Weller this is definitely for large uh, items you need to solder I actually used it to extract capacitors from uh, lead free or yeah lead free circuit boards so I could apply heat to both leads simultaneously and then just pull the component right out of the board uh, it's kinda overkill for everything else so don't need one of these really okay so this is the sixth soldering iron I purchased. It's a propane powered soldering iron, so you don't need a cord and you can use it anywhere. Uh, it's a Weller P2K Portisol. It comes with this nice case which has various tips. Uh, one of them is a butane blowtorch, one of them is for heat shrink tubing and the other one I think is for I'm not 100% sure what that's for so yeah it comes with several tips and you can get more for various uh, tip sizes as well so I still use this whenever I work in a place where electricity isn't available so like in a car or something like that if I need to do like uh, any solder work on a head unit or anything like that so yeah I really I think this is a good iron. Oh, and something else about this is it has a piezoelectric start, so you don't need to light it with anything. You just need to click the button and turn it on. So that's really convenient. And here's the seventh soldering iron I've owned. It's a uh, Hanko FX888. I've heard they've discontinued this. So I'd recommend buying one as soon as possible. They're only 
uh, $80 plus shipping, so it's not too expensive. I really think this is great iron. You have a uh, nice handled iron here, and you can take out the tip and replace it with whatever kind of tip you need. You can go up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit or 480 Celsius, and that will do lead-free and other stuff without a problem. It also has a really nice stand where it's nice and heavy so it won't move too much on you. Also it has a copper cleaning mesh in there as well as the cleaning sponge. So yeah it's a really great iron and I definitely recommend buying one of these before they're no longer available. So that's soldering irons. Hope this video was helpful.